Hello everyone, welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. In this lecture video, we're going to be moving on to something very special called moments. So sit back, relax. Again, I hope you guys are all doing well, hanging in there, and let's begin. So, moments of a force. Again, before we've always talked about forces that act at the same point. If everything's acting at the same point, no rotation occurs. However, we said that if forces do not act at the same point, we actually have rotation. Now, the best way to show that is through an example with a box. This is something very intuitive. A lot of you guys know what exactly is going to happen with this box when I start to apply forces. So if I were to take my box and I were to apply force at the very bottom of the box, well, we actually have two mechanisms. The first one is perhaps the most simplest to imagine is we have sliding. So we know at the bottom of this box, we have a frictional force that's going to try and counteract any movement I put onto the box. Now, if my force that I'm putting on exceeds the frictional force, now friction is something we're going to talk about later, but friction is capped. So if my force that I'm applying exceeds the frictional force, well, my box is actually going to start to slide. So that's going to be the first mechanism. Now, if I were to take that force and start moving it up the box, we introduce, or we are introduced to our second mechanism, which is going to be tipping. So if the applied force P starts to act at a significant distance above, of course, we know that the box is going to tip. And in this particular case, the box is going to tip about a very specific point. In this case, that is called point O. What happens is with this force, we actually created something called a moment because this force did not act through point P. Again, we're now in a situation where we have forces that do not act through a point. Now, a moment is a quantity used to describe the ability of a force to cause rotation of a body about a specified point. So the first key here is that moments are not general. Some moments can be general, and we're gonna discuss that in week five, but for the majority of the cases, moments are always specialized about a point. I wouldn't say that the general moment is something. I would say the moment about this point is this, the moment about this point is this, et cetera, et cetera. So the moments depend on which point you want to take them about. Now, the formula for moments in two dimensions, it's actually really simple. We're going to take our force and multiply it by a perpendicular distance. So the only thing that you guys actually have to remember is that this distance that we're multiplying our force by, it's going to be perpendicular. Now, if I'm taking force and multiplying it by distance, we know that moment's going to have units of something like Newton meters, or if you're in the States, pound feet, something like that. Now, again, the only thing I really want to stress is that perpendicular distance. So if we look back at our figure here, if I were to draw a line through that force, well, we know that that perpendicular distance is simply going to be that vertical distance, which I call D perpendicular. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that specific one. But as we can see, moments in two dimensions, they're actually really simple. Uh, this week, again, we're discussing moments of a whole. So we're going to go from 2D to 3D. The 2D moments, very simple. This video, hopefully it's rather short. But when we get to next week, 3D moments, or I guess the next video, that's where it starts to get a little bit more complex. So if you guys are saying Clayton, this is pretty easy. I'm having a great time. Well, good. I'm glad you're having a great time, but don't get too comfy. So before we get into 3D moments, let's talk about something called the principle of transmissibility. Now, this is actually really nice because it helps answer a lot of questions I find students who are experiencing moments for the first time have. Now, what this principle actually states is that if a force acts along a rigid body, the effect of the force is actually the same throughout its line of action. Now, you guys may be kind of doing that like blinking meme in St. Clayton. What the hell does that mean? Well, it actually means this. Let's say I had this situation right here where I have kind of an L-shaped bar and I want to take the moment about point O. The first thing that students have trouble with is finding that perpendicular distance because they don't really know what it is. And they'll say, if I measure directly from P and go straight up, well, I get my distance to a point, but that point isn't point O. So is this actually the distance that I use? And the answer is yes, because what the principle of transmissibility means is that the effect of this force will be the same along its line of action. So what I can do with my force is I can draw its line of action 
extending indefinitely, and then it allows for a very easy determination of that perpendicular distance. So as we can see here, the perpendicular distance in both cases is going to be the same. However, students much prefer directly measuring to the point rather than measuring to some random point in the object. So that's all that this is. Now, the second thing students seem to have trouble with is when we take our situation and we apply a force that's at an incline, something like this. Now, there's two things that can kind of happen here. The first is students will go, okay, well, I know that the perpendicular distance is going to look something like this, and I can solve that through trigonometry. Well, of course you can. You can definitely solve this through trigonometry, but I'm going to be honest with you guys, don't. It starts to become quite time consuming, and again, the name of the game in exam type scenarios is speed. You remember the cars from Disney? I am speed. That's what you guys should be doing right before the exam because you guys want to try and finish as fast as possible. Now, how do we counteract this? Well, the easiest way is to actually use vector components. So what I can do is I can take my situation that I have here on the left and I can say, well, that's actually the same as this situation on the right. Now, this is actually very nice because if we look at force PY, I can extend it up using the principle of transmissibility, and then I can say that my perpendicular distance is simply going to be dx. And I can do the same thing for component px. I can extend it using the principle of transmissibility, and then I can find that perpendicular distance dy. Now the question becomes, okay, okay, moments, simple. All I do is take my force, multiply it by a perpendicular distance. Yes, that is it, it is simple, but there's one last thing to keep in mind. Moments are vectors. They're just like forces. They are vectors. And remember that vectors have two things. First is the magnitude, which is going to be the force times the distance, but they also have a direction. Now, when we talked about forces, we said that vertical forces, for instance, if they're going upwards, they're positive, and if they're going downwards, they are negative. Well, moments follow kind of the same type of logic, where if we have a counterclockwise rotation, we say that it's a positive moment. And if it's a clockwise rotation, we say it is a negative moment. So this is in 2D. Counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. Now you guys may be saying, Clayton, how exactly do I tell if it's going to be a clockwise or counterclockwise moment? Well, the best thing I do in exams, and I, I was a, kind of a very proud instructor when I walked through the exam and I saw a lot of students doing that, is I just use my pencil. So for instance, if I'm looking at PX right now, and I want the moment about O, what I would do is I would hold my pencil, and where I'm holding my pencil, that is going to be point O, and we know that PX acts horizontal. So if I were to come through, as we can see, my pencil here starts to rotate clockwise. Now, if I were to do the same thing for PY, again, I'm gonna take my pencil, I'm going to hold it at the point I want to measure, and then I'm just going to apply the force. PY in this case goes upwards, so once I start pushing my pencil, we can see that it starts going counterclockwise. So that's what I do. It's very simple, and it's nice because in the exam, you have your pencil ready. It's very, very quick to kind of do the rotation. If you don't have a pencil during the exam, well, I'm sorry, but uh, I think you got bigger problems to worry about than to try and find a moment. So if I were to take the moment about point O using these two components, I would get the following equation for my moment. It would be negative px times dy, so again, the force times the perpendicular distance. And again, when we did the moment, we saw that px was clockwise, therefore we have the negative sign. And then we go plus py times dx. Again, for py, once I did my moment, we said it was counterclockwise, therefore it's going to be positive. So it's that sign convention you guys need to worry about. Other than that, moments are actually that simple. So yeah, that's it for this video. I wanna thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.